we not? Amen. Um, but still, very serious study, right? So, just if y'all don't mind, a show of hands, who keeps the Sabbath right now? There's a lot of you to keep the Sabbath. It's cool, okay? So, um, it's better than like singling out those that don't keep the Sabbath, right? Okay. Very because, inclusive. Because guess what? You're keeping the Sabbath right now. We're All the burning. Yes, it's horrible. And that sweet bread was, uh, I don't know, man, it's vicious. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is kind of a joke because, uh, not, not this teaching, but what I did is I had this uh, printed out over at the UPS store. And the guy at the UPS store, he likes to look at some of my studies and things that I print out. And so I kind of left a little bit thing on the top for him, but I kind of read it to a brother earlier. He thought I should probably uh, get a kick out of it over here too. So uh, this is a disclaimer, right? Uh, this study will expose you to life-changing truths. That being so, there are two outcomes that you must be warned about. Number one, this study can help you onto the road towards your redemption. Key word, redemption. Equally, this can lead you towards the road of condemnation. The deciding factor, what you do about it, which is the key thing about all this, right? So what we do, right? we can talk a bunch of shit all we want to, but if we don't do anything about it, then it doesn't help anybody, including ourselves. And if we're responsible for others, it's not going to help them either. So uh, if you guys don't mind, if you want to go with me on this, because I'm not just going to teach this. I'm going to absorb and listen and, and enjoy myself because I, I learn stuff every day. And uh, I expect to learn something today with you guys, okay? But we're, let's start, if you don't mind. Uh, well, hang on a second. If you have any questions for me, and this might not be like a methodical or anything like that, but please write them down so that I can talk to you after this, okay? Uh, or another brother that knows the Torah can talk to you after this, or we can discuss things and just enjoy each other's company. But um, questions are going to kind of prolong it um, because we could banter around all day because it's, it's the scriptures, man. It was the most awesome subject on the planet. Um, is that okay with you guys? Sound good? Yes. All right, please do and, and approach me, okay? Um, Genesis 2 is what I'd like to turn to first. Genesis 2, let's start with bar, uh, verse 1. We're going to go uh, verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to read the first one. But then if I have anyone that wants to participate and perhaps read a bit with me, then I'm, I'm going to call on you, okay? I really like that. <laughs> So, um, Genesis 2, 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their array. And on the seventh day Elohim completed his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart, because on it he rested from all his work which Elohim in creating had made. So this is our first... Uh, introduction to the Sabbath, okay? When the Father himself rested, which uh, we want to be like our daddy. We want to be good sons. And so that's what we're doing here today. And, um, and we're going to learn a little bit about the Sabbath itself. Okay? So some key words here that I want to point out. In verse 3, a key word is blessed. Okay? So the word blessed is Barak. Okay? And um, it... I've got two different sources right here. Usually I'll have two or three, but in this case I just have two. One of them is the Strong's Concordance, and one of them is the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible. Okay? And um, the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible defines Barak as the extended idea of presenting a gift or giving honor to another. So Abba Yahuwah, his gift of the Shabbat was an honor for us. He gave it to us because he, it came from his heart. This is something he wanted for us so that we can enjoy it with him, okay? Um, it's also in the sense of bringing a gift on bended knee. Mm -hmm. mm. What does that entail sometimes? Wedding. Oh, hey, a wedding. That's so cool. <laughs> That's part of the thing here, man. Um, good to go. All right, so and, and, and to be fair, let's go with Strong's Concordance because this is the a source that most people use to get some of their information on what these words mean. Uh, the word Barak in the Strong's Concordance, I'm not going to read all of it, but the, just the general, most, you know, the, the meaning here. Uh, to kneel, we just got that, as an act of adoration. He adores us. He loves us. And he wants us to do what he does. He wants us to be uh, obedient sons, okay, so that we can be with him in the kingdom. Because the opposite of that, what is disobedience, right? 
doesn't work out too well. It didn't work out too well for Satan. Okay? Um, so that is the word barak or blessing. The next one was to, um, let me see here. Did I mess that up? Yeah, no, I did, did I? Let me make sure. Nope, I'm still rocking. Okay, guys. So uh, next we're going to turn to Exodus 20, verse 8. Who really enjoys reading in here would like to hit it. <coughs> I want you to go 8 through 10, brother, if you don't mind. Bless you. 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh, your Elohim. You do not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your sojourner who is within your gates. Good to go. This is the what, the fourth commandment, correcto? Mm -hmm. All right, everybody knows that? So good to go. So this is actual part in the scriptures uh, where it mentions it as a commandment. So it looks like me, uh, to me, that the, that the Shabbat was created before the commandment was ever even formed up, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a thought process in mind. Um, the seventh day, okay? So we have a, we have a word in here. Um, we're going to go to uh, verse 8, which says, remember. Because this is the one um, commandment that he, he, he asks you to remember, okay? So we want to commit this to memory, all right? So we're going to, also we're going to define set it apart, okay? So let's start with remember, all right? Zakur, uh, to remember or a recalling of an event of the past or to uh, account upon a past event. It's also, this is, this is from the um, ancient Hebrew uh, lexicon. It is to remember in thought as a memorial or mention through speech and to be mindful of. Okay? That's that right there. They stick together, so I'm trying not to do that. Okay, there's quite a bit more, but yet this is uh, this puts it puts it into your mind what, what we're talking about here. Um, so we're gonna go with the strongest concordance definition. It is to properly mark so as to be recognized. That is, to remember by implication to mention, to speak of these words, to teach them to other people, to talk about this, okay? Um, we are to recount. We are to make to be remembered. So, how can we make it to be remembered? Does anybody got a thought on that? Passing it down by tradition. That's right, man. Deuteronomy 6. And do it. Absolutely. So we're going to what teach this to our children, are we not? Okay, we're going to teach it to our children as we sit in our house. Okay, so let's go with set apart real quick here. Okay, um, kadosh, kadosh, how you pronounce it? I'm not so good at that yet. Uh, set apart from the rest for a special function. So he's going to set us apart from the rest for a special function. He's separating and joining us to something. So he's separating us from the world. We're separate from the world, but we're joined together as the body of Mashiach here right now, the second. Okay? Joined to him, as a matter of fact, through the Messiah, which is the only way we can be. Um, one who is set apart as special, a saint, or holy. Okay? Someone or something that has been separated from the rest for a special purpose. It makes you feel good about yourself. Okay? And we know that he also sets things apart, too, to himself and things like that, right? So dedicated or consecrated, that's what we are, a place set apart for a special purpose. Well, we hope for to be in that place. It's called the kingdom, right? Okay. So. Now, this is the strongest concordance of Kadosh. Uh, causatively to make pronounce or observe as clean this is to set apart ceremonial clean or morally clean okay so he's set apart he's setting us apart he's setting us apart through what through the blood of his son uh, making us clean again we understand that concept those of us that trust in the Messiah um, and so we're being we're being sanctified okay and if we're participating in the Shabbat this shows that we are 
uh, completely on board with what the Father wants to the best of our ability. Of course, we're going to make quite a few mistakes along the way, but um, this is the first step. Of, I don't know. No, hang on a second, though. That's not the first step for some people, okay? This was my first step, and I talked to a brother earlier. I don't know if he's in here right now, but this was the first step for another brother I spoke to. Did anybody just try to institute the Shabbat in their house in order to come to the, come to the Torah? Is that one of the first moves anybody's made in here? Yes, indeed. Uh, you yes. brother? Yeah. yeah. That was one of my first moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know what I was doing, man. It's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> this was 24 years ago. And by the way, I could not have got this many people in America anyway that I know of, unless you went to a Jewish community, right, in the same room that was trying to keep the Shabbat together. Okay, this did not exist. Mm -hmm. And so you guys were all a blessing, and I didn't probably think I'd ever see it happen this way, but I'm, I'm pretty happy myself. Um, so uh, being set apart, so Kadosh, that was the whole thing. So here we are. Um, I'm going to go to Exodus 31, verse 12. Eric, are you a reader? Uh, I'm smiling because you're following the same outline that I created myself. <laughs> 12, 12 through what, brother? Dude, we must think alike. 12 and 13. 12 and 13. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, And you speak to the children of Israel, saying, My Sabbaths you are to guard by all means, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations to know that I, Yahweh, am setting you apart. Or is that good? Well, uh, where are you at here? Because I think there's... Okay, yep. Um, the only sign. Okay, that's my note. Okay, uh, if you don't Richard, mind, read through 18. Is that our Richard, Richard, brother? Brother. Richard, I was just going to point out the second witness and the third witness to that is Ezekiel 20.12 and uh, Ezekiel 20.20. That's what we were running into right there. That's my note. Go ahead, brother. Oh. <laughs> and you shall guard the Sabbath for it is set apart to you. Everyone who profanes it shall certainly be put to death. For anyone who does work on it, that being shall be cut off from among his people. Six days' work is done, and on the Sabbath is a Sabbath of rest set apart to Yahuwah. Everyone doing work on the Sabbath day shall certainly be put to death. And the children of Israel shall guard the Sabbath to perform the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. Between me and the children of Israel, it is a sign forever. For in six days, Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moshe two tablets of the witness, tablets of stone written with the fingers of Elohim. It's beautiful. So forever, right? So uh, the children of Israel or Israel, right? So what does that mean to us? Do you, uh, you guys recognize your, your identity in this at all? Okay. Because this is like a this was a mixed multitude of people, and um, these were people who willfully followed the Father. So it's not a bloodline. We already know that. At least a lot of us know that by reading the renewed covenant. It's a choice because even a lot of people in the bloodline are not going to choose the Messiah, and that means they're not going to be in the kingdom. That's all there is to it. That's not ours. Our saying. That's what the Father has to say about the whole thing. So uh, what I would say is. Um, Every one of us has a, a, a portion in the kingdom if we choose Messiah. And if we choose Messiah, which is, uh, some say Yeshua. It's a short short version. I say Yahushua because it's, a, it's the long version that's actually also in the scriptures. It means Yahuwah is salvation. And uh, Yeshua means salvation. Okay? So when people say that um, they have the Messiah, but they don't really need to do the Torah, I would say that if you think that you have salvation which is the name of Yeshua, but you don't think that you have it through the Torah, isn't the Messiah, and he is, the living word? Amen. So since, not if he's the living word, he's the word made manifest, he came here and showed an example of what to do, then I would think that we have to do what he did, right? The WWJD thing. Right? WWYD in this case, right? Okay. Right? For this you were called the Messiah, having suffered for your sins, that you might walk in his steps. Right? Exactly. And if you love me, you keep my commandments. Amen. And so his commandments aren't just to, even though we can have a discussion about that as well. Uh, the point of it all is, is we are to do, after we receive the Messiah and trust in him, then we're given the gift. Okay? Just like the children of Israel, Israel, left out of Egypt, 
And they went into the wilderness. Eventually, they were given a gift at the foot of the mountain. They were given the Torah. Okay, It's a set of instructions. And there was never anything wrong with the Torah. It was every one of us there's something wrong with. Can we admit that? Yeah. I'm broken as crap. Yeah. I stand up here teaching you something, and half of you have been better in your lives than I would have ever been able to be. You know, And I do realize that. And that makes me humble. It makes me, makes me really glad to be around every single one of you. I'm thankful for this right here. The brothers that I have, and dude, man, it's a warm feeling here. I like this. So we all have the chance to grab a hold of the seat seat, and that's what we're doing right this second, okay? Um, beautiful read, brother. In uh, verse 17, Exodus 31, uh, there is a word that says sign, and then after that word it says forever. We understand what that means because the Father does not change. So down here we're going to... We're going to um, define the, the, the word sign, okay, y'all? Let's do it with the Hebrew lexicon. Um, at is the word for sign. It means an agreement or a covenant by two where a sign or a mark of the agreement is made as a, as a reminder to both parties, okay? So it's between two or more, okay? So if you have an agreement between two people, there is a wedding contract. There is a, what a, a Hebrew word for it is ketubah, between a man and a wife. And I don't know if you guys have heard us mentioned as the bride of Messiah. Um, I'm kind of a, a bit of a manly man, and back in the day, I kind of had a small problem with that, you know, how stupid I was, you know? So anyway, the more I began to understand what this meant, the more I began to accept that thought process. Because there's two kinds of women, right? There's a faithful bride, and then there's what? A harlot. That's generally what it is, okay? So we have um, a, 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 an agreement here between two, and we're trying to be in this agreement, and we want to be the faithful bride of Messiah, okay? We want to keep the Torah. We want to go according to the, the wedding contract that we've been given, which is the Scriptures, Okay? It's also a, a sign. If that's what it already is. It's a mark. It's a mark. It's what we do. It's a mark. It's what we believe. The mark is what you do and what you believe. If you're doing something else besides what the scriptures say, and you believe that you should be doing something else besides what the scriptures say, then you've taken a different mark. Does that make sense? Might not be a computer chip, folks. Might just be Satan's six million tricks trying to take people off the narrow pathway, which is back what we're talking about right here, right now. Just thought process. That's the spiritual aspect of it. Because there's always a, a spiritual and a physical aspect. So the physical aspect, could they come and try to do something like that? It could happen. That's not today's subject matter, but that's food for thought, right? Okay. The arrival of one to the mark. So, so a sign is also an arrival to one to the mark. Okay, It's an agreement or covenant by two where, where a sign or a mark of the agreement is made as a reminder to both parties. Okay, So that was the Hebrew lexicon. Um, let me see. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm not a professional. Doing great, okay, so the word sign is oath, which I probably should have said that a while ago. I said ot, okay, ot, ot, ot. Um, and anyway, so here we are with the Strong's Concordance version of this, okay? And we have, uh, it says, in the sense of appearing, a signal, a beacon, a monument, evidence, or a token. So the Sabbath is the wedding ring. It's the token. There's not only one Sabbath, there's one weekly Sabbath, but there's also a monthly Sabbath. We can talk about that some other time. I saw a sliver tonight. Also, there is um, seven yearly Sabbaths, annual. One of them's Passover. Okay? We'll talk a little bit about that because I'm only trying to primarily touch on the Sabbath itself. Um, but there are several Sabbaths, so whenever he says to keep the Shabbat, keep
keep it holy, keep it close to you, keep it dear to you. He's not just uh, referencing one Sabbath. He's referencing his, his Sabbaths, okay? Um, so, and I said this a while ago, I believe, the Sabbaths are the mark of Yahuwah, the token or the wedding ring for the bride and the side. So we're, we're putting it on. Um, also, Aleph, Aleph Ta is the strength of the covenant. Aleph is the first Hebrew letter, and Ta is the last. Aleph means strength, and Ta means covenant. He is the strength of the covenant. Okay? I know some of you guys are Hebrew fans, too. I certainly am. So, we got Leviticus. Big surprise. Leviticus 23.1. Wow. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. Which one of you awesome brothers want to step up for me? Leviticus 21. Uh, 23, sir. Uh, verse 1 through 4. I don't know. Lot into it, bro. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The appointed times of Yahuwah, which are to proclaim as but you are to proclaim as set-apart gatherings. My appointed times are these. Six days' work is done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. A set-apart gathering, you do no work. It is a Sabbath to Yahuwah and all of your dwellings. Step through four, brother. Uh, yes, please. These are the appointed times of Yahuwah. Set-apart gatherings, which you are to proclaim at their appointed times. Good to go. Thank you. So we just mentioned there's a plural for this, correct? Mm -hmm. So we have several of them, and I know that some of you gentlemen already know about these things, so, um, you know, bless y'all for that. But whoever doesn't, there's several of them. And um, we have, like I spoke of, a weekly Shabbat, which we're doing right now. There's one at the first of the month, okay? And there's seven per year. There's even one every seven years, the seventh year. There's one every 50 years. It's called a jubilee. 49, 7 times 7, and then on the 50th year. I'm not trying to cause any crazy here tonight. Well, that's a lot for whoever has this done. This, but, um, and, and since there are seven, uh, and there's, yeah, man, we could be here all night. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> since there are seven, I'm going to mention the first three, which are the spring feasts. We have Passover, death. We have unleavened bread, burial. For three days and three nights. And we have first fruits, resurrection. Okay? So death, burial, and resurrection, which later on, this has all happened with a bunch of bulls and goats to begin with. But the plan of Abi Yahuwah was to bring his son forth, and he would be the Passover lamb. Okay? So that's what happened. Messiah came and he um, he fulfilled these <coughs> three feasts right here. And then we have the fourth feast, which is, I say feast, it's uh, appointed time. <coughs> it's also called a feast. Sometimes we don't feast on the feast, though, y'all. <laughs> Most of the time we do, right? That's a rough day. <laughs> <laughs> so the fourth one is uh, called Shavuot, and some people call it Pentecost. Y'all probably at least recognize that, if not the Shavuot aspect. And uh, the Torah was given at the foot of the mountain to Moshe on this day, and many, many years later, the Holy Spirit was given to the taught ones after uh, Messiah Yahushua ascended into the heavens. He had ascended into the heavens ten days later. They were given the Holy Spirit. Um, all the people that were given the Holy Spirit, well, by the way, they were Jewish folks over in the land at the temple. A lot of people don't know that. They think that there were Greek people doing Greek things, but that's not what it was. Um, so, that's the fourth. Now, these are to come. There's five, six, seven. We have the Feast of Trumpets. It is uh, also known as the last trump. It is also known as the day that no man, no man knows the hour. Does that sound familiar to y'all? Mm -hmm. Sounds like the Messiah might return on this day. See, when the Father makes an appointed time, he's going to keep his appointments. And so far, he's perfect, right? He's done these things. So then we have the day of atonement, the day of at one minute, okay? And that's the holiest day of the year, by the way, and we fast. We don't feast on this one. Um... And then there's something called Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. You may have at least heard of Tabernacles, but it's also called Sukkot. And it's actually an eight-day celebration. The first day of it is, uh, wow, we, we don't have a good time, do we, y'all? I mean, we have so many celebrations. Awesome. Oh, for crying out loud. Brutal. Save me! 
<laughs> well, that is that is terrible. <laughs> so the first day of this uh, Sukkot is a, uh, is a high holy day, okay? And the last day, the eighth day, it's called. It's um, it's a high holy day. We can have that another time too, folks. Okay. <laughs> so let's go with um, Leviticus 23, 4, and it says appointed times. Let's define appointed times. So appointed times in the ancient Hebrew lexicon is the word moed. And there's they also syllabalize it to give you some really good information. Um, I'm going to skip the syllable. I'm going to skip the syllable. I'm going to go directly to the actual spelling. Even though when you cut a syllable in half, you can get another word that's the reason, the root word of this. Y'all understand what a root word is. But let's just do this instead, okay? So the appointed time is a place appointed for as a witness, okay? The Father makes an appointment with us. We're going to have to keep those appointments. If you do not show up for your appointment, you are screwed. You don't get your teeth pulled. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you don't get your operation, and you don't probably get salvation either. But there's that, okay? All right? Only, now see, there's the disclaimer part. People that aren't aware of this won't be judged as harshly at all. But people that are made aware of this, they absolutely are responsible for this. Not only are you responsible for yourselves if you didn't know these things before, but you're responsible for your entire freaking family and everyone that you breathe a breath near. You just got to find a way to witness to them. Find an opening. There's that. Okay. So, that was, uh, now let's go to the Strong's Concordance, okay? Moed. Uh, properly an appointment. A fixed time, and they are. Uh, an assembly, oh man, as convened for a definite purpose. I'd say Shabbat and gathering like this is a definite purpose. A signal, he's telling you, hey, look, I'm trying to show you something. As appointed beforehand, because he did this, what, on the seventh day of creation. So this was planned out way long ago, okay? Um, so what we've used so far is we've used the, uh, the Torah, the Torah's witness of the Shabbat. We're going to move on to the prophets now because, like I say, I always go scriptural based with um, two to three witnesses, okay? So let's move to Yeshiahu or Isaiah 56, verse 1. <laughs> I'm about to get charged up. It's about to be a little bit. One, just one or one through what? We're going to go one through seven on this one. That's not too bad. Roger, I got it. Thus said Yahuwah, guard right ruling and do and do righteousness. For near is my deliverance to come and my righteousness to be revealed. On the side. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who becomes strong in it. Guarding the Sabbath, lest he profane it, and guarding his hand from doing any evil. And let not the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Yahuwah speak, saying, Yahuwah has certainly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, Look, I am a dry tree. For thus Yahuwah said to the eunuchs who guard my Sabbaths and have chosen what pleases me and are holding on to my covenant. To them I shall give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that, better than that of the sons and daughters. I give them an everlasting name that is not cut off. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yahuwah to serve him and to love the name of Yahuwah and to be his servants, all who guard the Sabbath and not profane it and are holding on to my covenant. Them I shall bring into my set-apart mountain, and let them rejoice in my house of prayer. Their ascending offerings and the slaughterings are accepted on my slaughter place, for my house is called a house of prayer for all the peoples. Oh, Amen. Right, that's an offering up to every single one of us. Okay? Uh, from foreigner to eunuch to anyone that will, because sometimes you have unappreciative sons and daughters, correct? Right. Well, you know what? Whoever uh, loves you the most, he'll, you know, let him near. There's that. And he will. And so that's proof in the, in the prophets. Now, I'm a big, uh, big fan of Isaiah, Yeshiahu. So uh, we're going we're gonna to do a little bit more from, from his, his writings here. This is a bit more of a page. So if, if someone wants to have this or someone wants to read the whole thing, that's their, 
That's their business. I'm probably going to get it stopped halfway so I can uh, do a little discussion on something. Um, this, uh, this particular part, Isaiah 58, 1, is where we're starting. This references the Day of Atonement or the Day of at one -ment, okay? Um, a lot of things go on on the Day of Atonement. One thing that happens for us is that we fast. Um, but there is a ceremony that ends up uh, with the high priest has two goats. And he stands at the uh, entry point of the tent of meeting. And he brings one for the Father. And he puts one out into the outer darkness, the wilderness, for a particular uh, name that I won't speak in this room. It's particularly on Shabbat. But I would have to say um, that's, what, uh, that's what he does. Uh, and so um, in this case, Messiah is the high priest. And he also is the sacrifice. He is Elohim in bodily manifestation of the Father himself. The Father took directly from himself because he could take from nothing else. He was the only living life power source. He took directly from him and created his son. Okay? Uh, I liken it to a candle being lit. And he just lit another candle. And didn't take anything from this candle. And that candle lit other candles. And it didn't take anything from that candle either. Okay? So we have, he's the high priest. He's the sacrifice. He is Elohim bodily manifest in the flesh. And he is the king. So pretty much, he is the whole propitiation of all of these high holy days. And if you get to study them, I believe, Eric, you're studying them pretty good right now, right? You get to see how beautiful that is. It brings tears to my eyes sometimes, but it also gives me charge, man. The Father saved me from so many things. It's just that he even let me know some of this stuff is amazing. Um, so this is the sixth of the seven feasts. It is an annual feast. It happens yearly. And like I said, we fast, and it's the holiest day of the year. So whoever wants to start, please read from 1 to 5. Please do, brother. Cry aloud, do not spare. Lift up your voice like the shofar. Declare to my people their transgression and the house of Yaqub their sins. Yet they seek me day by day and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the right ruling of their Elohim. They ask of me rulings of righteousness. They delight in drawing near to Elohim. They say, why have we fasted and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our beings and you took no note? Look in the day of your fasting, you find pleasure and drive on all your laborers. Look, you fast for strife and contention and to strike with the fist of wrongness. You do not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his being? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast and an acceptable day to a Yahuwah? Okay. So what we have here is we have people that think that they're pleasing the Father, but they're far from him. Their lips speak these words, but their actions and what they actually do is far from him. Okay. Uh, they're fasting on this day, it sounds like to me, because they know better not to. Okay. But yet, whenever they fast and they pray... Their, their prayers aren't really answered because he knows their intentions. What we have to do whenever we pray and whenever we do anything, um, whenever we interact with one another, we have to have good intentions. We have to have good thoughts to the best of our ability. We have to let those things run our emotions. We have to let those emotions and thoughts and intentions run our words. And those words, all of those ahead <laughs> of that, let's, let them run our actions. And if we do that, if we do that, we have this fist right here, and it's extremely strong. And, and we're going to act upon that. We're going to act upon righteousness if we get a hold of every aspect of our lives. And we use that for, for Torah righteousness, okay? That's how we should deal with one another as brothers, even if it's a, a difficult discussion or, or whatever it may be, okay? Um, so I'm going to read 58, 6, and 7. It says, is not... <clears throat> Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loosen the tight cords of wrongness. Now wrongness is sin. And those cords are tight, right? To undo the bands of the yoke. Not the father's yoke, but the yoke of sin. To exempt the oppressed and to break off every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring to your house the poor who are, <clears throat> who are cast out? 
When you see the naked and cover him, sound familiar? And not hide yourself from your own flesh. Now see, this, this day of atonement is starting to sound like a really awesome thing, is it not? This is the, like the most intimate aspect, okay? It's what you do for others and, and how you treat others and how the Father treats you and how you, you better treat him back. You know where I'm coming from. So this is a concept, and this is also, uh, I can see Messiah all through this. This was achieved by Yahushua Messiah himself, okay? Now, some people haven't had him or accepted him yet, and they're still going to get a chance until, until the end of this whole thing, which the Father has that decision when that's going to be. But still, he overall, at that one point, all the sins from everybody before him and everybody after him, he's given them the chance to have these cords of wrongness uh, cut from our bodies, okay? Our yoke is Messiah Yahushua, and his yoke is easy. It's this right here. It's this fellowship, okay? So you don't have to twist my arm too hard. So, uh, and you know, well, like I said, there's more to come. Um, I want to hit that part. Okay, so what brother wants to do 58, 8 through, mm -hmm. let me not mess this up, here, through 14. Then your light would break forth like the morning, your healing spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The esteem of Yahweh would be your rear guard. Then when you call, Yahweh would answer. When you cry, he would say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of unrighteousness, if you extend your being to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted being, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness be as noon. Then Yahweh would guide you continually and satisfy your being in drought and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a water, gar a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you would be called the repair of the breach and the restorer of the streets to dwell in. If you do turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my set-apart day, and shall call the Sabbath a delight, the set-apart day of Yahweh esteemed, and shall esteem it, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in Yahweh, and I shall cause you to ride on the heights of the earth and feed you with the inheritance of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Now that's about the kingdom right there. That's our inheritance. We do these things, right? What we're doing right now. Um, so who is the preparer of the breach? Messiah, absolutely, brother. And so what is this breach? It's a breach that we made. We made between us and the Father that cut us off from him. Now we're being grafted back in to the tree, right? Okay, to the domesticated olive tree, which the root of that and holds the whole tree up is the Messiah himself. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that's what I got for that. Because that's another one we could do forever. Um, <laughs> Okay, y'all busted me. Isaiah, Yeshiahu, 66, 15. This guy. <laughs> if I could have that kind of knowledge, and that'd be beautiful. So I'm just going to borrow from him. <laughs> 15, what? This is going to be uh, Yeshiahu, Isaiah 66, verse 15. Um... Whoever wants to read, if they want to read the whole thing or if they want to stop midway, whatever happens, uh, I want to, after they finish 17, I want, to, I want to point something out here. For look, Yahweh comes with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his displeasure with burning and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, Yahuwah shall judge all flesh and the slain of Yahuwah shall be many. Amen. Those who set themselves apart and cleanse themselves at the gardens after one in the midst, eating flesh of pigs and the abomination and the mouse, are snatched away together, declares Yahweh. Okay. So let, let's deal with this for a second. Verse, uh, verse 17. Those who set themselves apart. Bad news, folks. Uh, the Messiah, well, good news is the Messiah is the only one that can set you apart. 
if you try to set yourself apart, you're going to find out what happens. It's not going to go very well. And you're not going to cleanse yourself because the blood of Messiah cleanses you from that breach, those sins that you've committed, right? So I don't think these people are doing too good at this point, okay? At the gardens after one, in the midst, eating flesh of pigs. Well, based on this setting themselves apart and cleansing themselves, I'd have to say this eating the flesh of pigs is probably a really bad thing to do as well. Even though we know for sure we're ordered, commanded not to eat swine. And the abomination of the mouse. Here's a bad one. Who eats squirrel? Okay. See if it's a, see if it's a mouse. Okay. Uh, are snatched away together, declares Yahuwah. So these people are snatched away. I don't know if I want to be. I don't know if I want to be those people. Um, I might want to be left here uh, for the kingdom. The kingdom's going to happen here. The 7,000th year of millennial kingdom is going to happen on this planet, okay? The only being taken up or taken away we're going to get is in the air with the Messiah, and we're coming back down because we're going to be with him forever. And he's coming back down to clean house, family, okay? No one's getting snatched off to heaven because that's not what the scriptures say. That's, that's, that's a made-up doctrine. Yeah. This, this snatched away is much more like the way a falcon snatches away a mouse in the field doesn't turn out so well for the yes. <laughs> And you know what? The, that's also an unclean bird, right? So what's the comparison there? The point of it all is, is you have these uh, these people, they're not going to be happy when they find out where they end up, okay? Uh, so 18 through, give me a second here. 18 through 24, please. And I, because of their works and their imaginations, am coming to gather all nations and tongues that shall come and see my esteem. Sounds familiar. And I shall appoint a sign among and shall send some of those who escape to the nations, Tarshish and Bu and Lev, who draw the bow and Tubal and Yawan, and coastlands far off who have not heard my report nor seen my esteem. They shall declare my esteem among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brothers an offering as an offering to Yahweh out all their Gentiles on horses and in chariots and litters, on mules, on camels, to my Kadesh mountain, Jerusalem, declares Yahweh, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of Yahweh. And from them too I shall take from the Kohen or Levites, declares Yahweh, for as the new Shanaim and the new earth that I make stand before me, declares Yahweh, so your seed and your name shall stand. Okay, give me a second, brother. Good to go. I'm going to join you reading too, by the way. Um, so what we have here is we have uh, people that are taken from among the Gentiles. Okay? And when the, when the message gets to Gentiles, they are no longer Gentiles if they accept the message. The very meaning of the word Gentile is heathen. Okay? So people have been calling themselves uh, uh, the Gentile church for a long time. I think that I would be careful what I call myself until I looked up what some of these words mean. We are no Gentiles. No one standing here is a Gentile, okay? Because we are not heathen. And that would refer to people that are not keeping the scriptures, the Torah. Not just those that aren't Jewish, okay? It's everyone here, okay? So, um, 22, brother. Uh, 22 again? Through 24, please. Okay. Uh, for as a new Shamaim and the new earth that I make stand before me, declares Yahweh, so your seed and your name shall stand. Okay, beautiful. And it shall be that from the new moon to the new moon, and from the Shabbat to the Shabbat, all flesh shall come to worship me, or before me, declares Yahweh. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have trans uh, transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, and their fire not be quenched. And they shall be repulsive to all flesh. Did we just read out the book of Revelations here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It sounds like uh, Yochanan was, uh, John was um, influenced by a little bit of Isaiah and actually given that message by Messiah himself. Um, so what we have here is we have um, a new earth, a new heavens and a new earth. Right? Okay. So this is, uh, this is future. This is in the uh, coming days. Right? This is beautiful. And um, so here we go with the discussion about new moon to new moon, with me, which means month to month. And I spoke a while ago about a, a new moon high holy day. Well, not high holy day, but, but it is a Sabbath. There's high holy days and there's holy days. There's some are a bit more important because of 
things the Father does on these, okay? But anyway, the month, and we talked about from Sabbath to Sabbath. And this is, this is in the days to come. This is in the new heavens and earth. So if it's going on then, and it was going on before, what happened in the middle? Amen. Satan's mouth is what happened, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not going to put up with that crap. He needs to shut up, because we, we're not hearing it. Uh, we've got ear for the Father these days. And uh, more and more of us are coming up and, and, and paying attention to detail. Um, thank you for reading that, man. That's kind of charging me up. Uh, let's move on to Ezekiel, another witness for us about keeping the Shabbat. Let's go to Ezekiel 46, verse 1 through, through 3. And some brave soul would like to take care of this, please. Thus said the Master Yahuwah, the gate of the inner courtyard facing the east is shut the six days of work, but on the Sabbath it is open, and on the day of the new moon it is open. And the prince shall enter by way of the porch of the gate from the outside, and he shall stand by the post. And the priest shall prepare his ascending offering and his peace offering. And he shall bow himself at the threshold of the gate and shall go out. But the gate is not shut until evening. And the people of the land shall also bow themselves at the entrance to this gate before Yahuwah on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. Awesome. There's another witness for us in Ezekiel. Um, let's move up to Nehemiah. Nehemiah 13, 19 through 22. If somebody's got a page number in the description, don't be shy. <laughs> I should have been doing that. <laughs> I'm cheating over here. I just printed out a UPS. <laughs> For that dude that keeps on looking at my stuff. I hope you got an extra copy. What's a good guy? What's the chapter? Uh, it's chapter 13, verse 9. 844. It's uh, chapter 13, verse 19. That's okay. Just 19? Well, it'll be through 22, sir. Got it. And it came to be when the gates of Jerusalem were shaded before the Sabbath that I commanded the doors to be shut and commanded that they should not be open until after the Sabbath. And I stationed some of my servants at the gates so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. And the merchants and the sellers of all kinds of wares spent the night outside in Yerushalayim once or twice. And I warned them, and I said to them, Why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I lay hands on you. From that time on, they came no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and they should come guarding the gates to set apart the Sabbath day, to set apart the Sabbath day. Remember me, O my Elohim, concerning this also, and pardon me according to the greatness of your loving commitment. Sounds like grace right there, doesn't it? <laughs> and the hymn was going to beat ass. <laughs> and the cool thing is, is that would be a really good brother of mine. I dig that. Okay, so that right there is um, a witness to the Shabbat from the prophets, the major and minor prophets. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the Brit Hadashah or the Renewed Covenant because there's nothing new about it. It's the same wedding contract offered up again to us generations later. Same words, everything. The only difference is, is it's not just going to be on stone. It's going to be written in our hearts and in our minds so that we will, we will do these things, okay, and speak about them. Uh, so I'm going to read some of this. I got a little title over the top of uh, Matthew 12:10 through 11. No, I'm sorry, Matthew 12:10 only. No, no, it is 11, 10, 11, and 12. Ooh. I guess I'm getting colorblind, y'all. Um, so he healed and did good. So Matthew 12:10 says, and see. There was a man having a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it right to heal on the Sabbath? 
so as to accuse him. Doesn't sound like they mean well. And he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, shall not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more worth is a man than a sheep? So it is right to do good on the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is not a jail cell. The Sabbath is not an excuse not to help people. Okay? You should not do anything that is going to benefit you personally, but you should absolutely help your neighbors and your brothers if, in fact, <coughs> there's a, a life or a, a life of an animal or anything like that. Because you know what? If it's a life, one of our lives, then how can you serve Yahuwah if you're dead? Okay? So he expects love, first and foremost. But that doesn't just mean that we don't uh, keep the Shabbat. We keep it as much as we can, but we only break it for something to that degree. You understand? Because love is the higher calling. So people try to butcher that. So I'm going to land it out there. Um, so we're going to go to Mark, if you want to. Mark 6, 1 and 6, 2. He taught the congregation. And he went away from there and came to his own country. And his taught ones followed him. And Sabbath having come, he began to teach in the congregation, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did he get all of this? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such miracles are done through his hands? So the Messiah, by and large, was teaching a congregation on the Sabbath from what? Do you guys know? From the Torah, because the renewed covenant hadn't been written yet. Okay? So he's teaching from the Torah in the congregation, and he's keeping the Sabbath. So that's a good thing to note right there. And this is Mark's witness of that. So we're going to move on to Luke. Luke 4, 14 through, man, I've got some Luke here, through 21. I'm going to read this too. He read the prophets. And what some people call the Old Testament, we call the Torah on the Sabbath. 4.14, And Yahushua returned in the power of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to Galil. And news of him went out through all the surrounding country. And he was teaching in their congregations, being praised by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And according to his practice, this is what he did regularly, he went into the congregation on the Sabbath day and stood up and read. Probably the Torah portion. And the scroll of the prophet Yeshayahu was handed to him. And having unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of Yahuwah is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to send away crushed ones with the release to proclaim the acceptable acceptable year of Yahuwah. And having rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the congregation were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So he read the prophets and the Torah in the congregation on the Sabbath. Because that's what the Messiah did as an example for us to do. Okay. Next, I'm going to read uh, Hebrews 4, 1 through 11. You guys are getting hungry. I'm just about done. I'm trying to feed y'all the right way. Uh, four, it's uh, Hebrews 4, 1 through 11. I heard some stomachs growling. Some of that. So the title of this is he taught, he read, he fulfilled prophecy, and he did these things all on the Sabbath. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us fear. This is Shaul, by the way, or Paul. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. We don't want that. 
For indeed the good news was brought to us as well as to them. Hang on a second. To them. So you mean they got this at the foot of the mountain? Because these are the people of the renewed covenant. With them he's talking about the forefathers. But the word which they heard did not profit them, the Torah, not having been mixed with belief, trust, and those who heard it, trusting is to do what your father says. For we who have believed do enter into that rest, and as he has said, as I swear in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, which means he's not going to let those people go, and yet his works have come into being from the foundation of the world. This is way before this was ever said. For somewhere he has said thus about the seventh day. And Elohim rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in this again, and in this again, if they shall enter into my rest. Since then it remains for some to enter into it. And those who formerly received the good news did not, in, <clears throat> did not enter in because of disobedience. Disobedience. He again defines a certain day. Today, right now, you, this is being offered. Saying, through Dawid, so much later as it has been said. Today, if you, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Yahushua, which by the way is Joshua, the true name, had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So, there remains a Sabbath keeping, the 7,000 here, the millennial kingdom, for the people of Elohim. For the one having entered into his rest has himself also rested from his work as Elohim rested from his own. Let us therefore do our utmost to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after that same example of disobedience. Up here he's talking about they broke the Sabbath. But they broke the Sabbaths. Okay? Because this is talking about a rest that is to come, which is the millennial reign. But then he's talking about the weekly Sabbath. So he's talking about two separate but still tied things. He's talking about the 7,000th year and also the seventh day. Okay? So he wants you to keep all of the Sabbaths. So we have to learn these things. Right? And there's a lot of details to it, and they're all beautiful. But yet... Here it is, Shaul telling you, which he's a, basically a lawyer of the Torah. And um, a lot of his stuff, everybody already knows, is saying that it's hard to understand Shaul. But I guarantee you, he didn't break the Torah not one bit. Okay? Except for whenever he helped stone Timothy. All right, so what we're going to do now is um, we, we made a point about the Sabbath, all the Sabbaths, right? Primarily the Sabbath that we're doing right now, this weekly Sabbath. Um, let's talk about a little something here. Who changed the Sabbath? Does anybody know who changed the Sabbath? Man. So that is definitely one of the people in a, in a pretty good... Who said that? Was that your brother? Yes, sir. Awesome. So, Ignatius. He was a Hellenistic leader. Entered, and he introduced confiscated authority after the taught ones, the disciples, and the apostles, apostles were gone from the earth. So with all of the men of Yahuwah at that time died, there were the leadership, then popped up these wolves amongst the congregation and began to be Nicolaitans to them, began to crush them, and began to take money from them and, and gain control over them, okay? Um, later, Emperor Constantine wrote a creed outlawing all Torah-based practice by penalty of death, and the Council of Nicaea changed the Shabbat to Sunday in 328 CE. None of this lawlessness was authorized by our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and, not, and certainly not by His one and only begotten Son, Yahushua. This is clearly orchestrated by the adversary himself. Okay? So, anything changing the Sabbath was orchestrated by Satan. I'll say it to anybody's face. And in a kind manner if I have to, and not so kind if I have to do that as well. Because um, the point of it all is, if you're pushing a false doctrine... Uh, you need to be called on the carpet because you're going to cause some people to lose their soul. We're not having that shit. Okay. Um, let's move to John 14, 15 through 17. I've only got six more verses for y'all, man. Hold tight. I love y'all. 
So John 14, 15. Are you on there, Eric? I'm sorry. Are, are you on there? No. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Um, John 14, 15, because I like, I like hearing you. I like hearing you. Uh, John 14, 15 through 17. Oh, is that on my list? Hold on. 1042. It might be. It should be. 1042. Uh, if you um, love me, you shall guard my commands. And I shall ask the Father, and he shall give you another helper to stay with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world is unable to receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, for he stays with you and shall be in you. Awesome. So this, uh, sorry, that was the first one on my list. So you're just going out of order. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we have here is we have the spirit of truth. Well, the only spirit that we have is the Ruach HaKodesh, because any other spirit is not of Yahuwah. Okay? And the Ruach HaKodesh is the spirit of truth and is the teacher of the Torah. So I'm not teaching you anything tonight. The only thing that I'm saying, I'm repeating it directly from the Father's Word, and I have no... Uh, haughtiness about me, only humble and thankful to be here and to be a brother. And uh, the Father let me live long enough to see any of this. Okay? So I would say that the Ruach HaKodesh is the teacher of the Torah. Okay? And is the spirit of truth. So let's define what the truth is. So, y'all don't have to turn to this. I'm going to read these three and then we're out of here. Uh, Psalms 105 says, For Yahuwah is good. He's good. He's functional. He's tov. His kindness is everlasting, and His truth to all generations. His truth is to all generations. Psalms 119, 142. Your righteousness is righteousness forever, and your Torah is truth. So we're going to let the Word define the Word. The Torah is the truth. The Ruach HaKodesh is the teacher of the Torah, which is the truth. Okay? This is in the Renewed Covenant. People don't see this. We see it, okay? Um, so the Torah is the truth that this Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, teaches us. 119, 151, you are near, O Yahuwah, and all your commands are truth. That's it. Thank you for suffering me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>